What up, motherfuckers? This is Jackson Gabbard back for episode five of The Unqualified Engineer. I'm going to be real with you people. Getting a little bit bored with the uh, polite, PC, delicate episodes that I've been up to recently. I'd like to just keep it a little bit more real with you all. And so this episode, you're going to get the raw, uncut Jackson. And that has nothing to do with my parents' decisions related to my anatomy when I was a baby. I mean, I just want this to be more authentic me coming out. And so, brace yourselves, because I might use some wordy dares. Got some new markers for my glass. Very nice. Best part is, when you spray them, it looks like blood. So for this episode, we're going to be exploring an oldie but a goodie. The largest rectangle within a histogram problem. And while this problem is not super algorithmically complex, the, the optimal solution to it is more surprising than you might expect. Man, drawing straight lines is hard. Let me try again. Ugh, no, nah, fuck it. So what do we mean when we say a histogram? This is something not everybody even knows about, I guess. A histogram basically is an X and a Y axis, where for every X you have some Y value. And for this problem, we're going to assume that all of those Y values are positive integers. And the goal here is to try to figure out if you have a histogram, what the biggest rectangle you could draw within it would be. So, you know, from the far left side to the far right side, where in that histogram is there the biggest rectangle? And now if you look at my example here, it's pretty obvious straight away that the big, tall, six by, uh, six by two rectangle is the biggest rectangle. That gives you an area of 12. So that's the obvious case, but there are lots of other cases that are not obvious at all. For instance, what if we modified the histogram to look like this? So you can see now we've got some real contenders for the largest rectangle case. We've got a three by two, we've got a three by three, but then you'll notice way down here at the bottom, we actually have a two by seven, which is in fact the largest rectangle in this histogram. And let's get to the exciting part. Let's talk about the algorithm for this. To brute force this algorithm, you would basically start at every X position and go up through the Y axis of that X and go to the right until you hit something that doesn't fit. And then keep that maximum area you've seen across each position in the x-axis and that would kind of get you there that would definitely eventually get you to a correct answer but you would do so much work so much unnecessary work because you would in fact spend a ton of your time just recounting the positions in the histogram that you've already seen before so a much better option is one that doesn't require you to do any backtracking or to recount any of the squares in the histogram again and again and again and the best solution to this that i know uses a stack and the algorithm for it is pretty cool actually the idea basically is that anytime you reach a new height in the histogram going from the left to the right, you could be starting a new rectangle. You can't know. In fact, you won't know until you hit a lower height, until, the, until you've reached the terminal point of whatever that rectangle might be. And so the algorithm for this works pretty much that way. You start from the left side, you check to see if you're at the first or at the biggest height you've seen so far, and if you are at that position, then you push it into a stack. Now we actually need two stacks. We need one to store the height and one to store the position, and we'll make sure they stay in sync. So if we look at this example, as soon as we hit the first one, we know that we might have a rectangle of height one, but we don't know how wide it might be. So we'll just push that into our stack. We'll keep track of that, and then we'll move on to the three. Now, if we're in the three, we still have the one going because three is bigger than one, but we also might have a new rectangle starting of height three. And in fact, we know we have at least a one by three because that's the definition of the histogram. So we'll push three into our stack as well, and we'll keep going. Now, when you get to the two, two is smaller than the three, so we know that our height three rectangle is done. It can't be any wider than it is because there is literally no more histogram with three in it. So at this point, we need to get rid of our three, but we need to keep track of it because it might be the biggest one. At least we don't know that it's not yet. But we should be really clear about how we're deciding the size of the rectangle that we've seen. Now visually it's obvious that it's a height three and width one rectangle, but we have to think in the general case here. The general case is basically saying we know because of the contents of the stack that we have at one point seen a height three and it was at some position. Now in this case the position is at position one, but we're now at position two. And so the only way to know the height and the width of this rectangle is to say what was the height that we saw and then where are we now? Minus, where did that rectangle start? So if we're at two right now, if we subtract the one from it, that gives us one, and three times one is three, which is the correct size for this rectangle. And so knowing that, knowing that we have seen a size three rectangle, we can keep going. 
That's, that's as much information as we need because that gives us enough information to either return this three if it is in fact the biggest rectangle or to discard it if we find a bigger one later. Now let's talk about how we would proceed forward. We want to keep leveraging this stack to make sense of the problem. So now we've got two. And the immediate question we have to ask is, what's on top of our stack? We don't have a bigger value than two on the stack, and so we need to push two onto the stack. So there's actually a kind of a subtle thing here, which is that the two doesn't start with itself. The two actually started inside the three. And so while we'll store the height two in the stack for the heights, we don't want to store position two. We want to keep position one because that's actually where our rectangle started. And so we'll proceed forward from there with the same process. And in this case, the very next thing we hit is a height one at position three. We're going to take everything off of the stack that's taller than height one, and we're going to figure out what size rectangle those taller heights were composing, and then figure out if those rectangles are bigger than the biggest rectangle we've seen. And that's how we're going to find the biggest overall rectangle. So we take our two, and then we take the position that it started, which was position one, and we say, okay, so two is our height. Where are we now? Now we're at position three. This started at position one, so two times three minus one gives us four. And so now all we need to do is choose the maximum value between what we've seen before and what we have now. And if we keep doing that, we will always keep the biggest value there, no matter if it was earlier in the histogram or later in the histogram. And now we've done our first real replacement of the biggest rectangle. At first, we thought it was the height three with one rectangle, but now we've got a two by two that's bigger. It's a bigger area, and that's awesome. So, and so we return to our stack with our current position, and the value we have at our current position is one. Well, it turns out one is already in the stack, and so we don't need to replace it. We can just keep on rolling. So when we reach the next point in the histogram, we find that we've got two. Now two is bigger than our one, and so we're gonna push another position onto our stack. We'll put the two into the height stack and the four into the position stack. And so now we're out of histogram, we've reached the end. The only thing we have left to do is to digest what's in our stack. As we reach the end of the histogram, we need to tally up the size of the rectangles that we've been keeping track of that we haven't reached the end of yet. And in this case, we have two rectangles that have been open but not shut, so to speak. Now this height two started at position four, we're now sort of at position five, which is to say we're at the width of the histogram. And so if this started at position four, we're gonna subtract four from five, we get one. Two times one is two. So this is just a two by one rectangle, not interesting. We'll ditch that. But then what about this one? What about this height one rectangle? Well, it started way back at position zero, way back in the day. And we've been carrying it along since we first started this problem. So let's do the math on this. The position is zero, and if we're considering the full width of the histogram as five, five minus zero is five. So one times five means that we actually have found our biggest rectangle. And this biggest rectangle is a one by five area five rectangle, which is clearly bigger than the two by two that we found before. And if you're seeing this thinking, what is he even talking about? Like what height one rectangle are you talking about? Let me color it in. Now you see that fancy, wonderful height one rectangle that's been lurking there the whole time, just waiting for you to notice it. All it wanted was your love. And you kept it at the bottom of the stack, you animal. So today we're gonna code in Java. Just kidding, we're coding in JavaScript. I, like most people who code in Java, don't know Java. Now, since we're writing in JavaScript, we need to carefully consider all both of the available data structures. We've got the object and we've got the array. It would be awesome to have a real stack data structure that we can use for this because it's much more memory efficient and the API that it offers is the correct API for stack operations. But this is JavaScript, so we'll put away our dreams of memory efficiency with our hope to have a coherent substring API. And though we don't have a histogram class either, we can just leverage a vanilla JavaScript array because JavaScript only has two data structures. They're both super versatile. They have almost as many uses as jQuery has overloaded function signatures. So we'll represent our histogram as a JavaScript array with, an, with a positive integer in every position that will represent the Y axis. And then the position in the array will represent the X axis. So let's call this function find largest rectangle. So right off the bat, I can know that we need at least something to address the height that we're currently at and something to store the position that we're currently at. So today we're going to code using a for loop, which is an ancient form of loop used way before there was a for each for everything, back before JavaScript engineers only knew how to do things with callbacks. JavaScript is just so full of callbacks, unlike my dating life. 
So we can use an object or we can use an array to represent our stack. I think it probably makes most sense to use an array. For efficiency's sake, you really want to avoid manipulating the data structures, pushing, popping, things like that. Luckily, V8 has done a pretty good job of optimizing the basic array operations like push and pop. So even though we're abusing the data structure, I think it will be fairly efficient. So instead of using a peak method like you would in a normal stack, we'll just index to length minus one. So remember we have two cases here basically. We've got the case where we are either at the beginning of our stack or we have a value that's bigger than what's on top of our stack. And in that case, we just wanna push these values, this height and this position into their respective stacks. And then there's the other case, the case where whatever we've arrived at is less than what's on the top of our stack. If we're there, then we gotta do some real work. If you remember back a few minutes where we discussed the algorithm for this, what we said was, when you find a height that is smaller than the height that's on top of the stack, that you have to pop that item off the stack, figure out what size rectangle it was composing, figure out if that was the maximum size of rectangle you've ever seen. Here I'm going to do something a bit creative. I am going to take advantage of JavaScript's ability to just put functions anywhere, because after all, JavaScript scoping is looser than the Taco Bell shits. So my function within a function is called pop that shit because we're gonna pop that shit off the top of the stack as many times as it takes to get to a height that is the same or lower than the height that we currently have. I have a very specific reason for doing this. I'm going to use exactly the same logic in a couple of places. In my trial runs, I actually ran out of whiteboard space. So I'm gonna move pop that shit up here to the right corner to keep it out of the way. So just imagine that pop that shit is declared as a function inside of this function right here. And the logic of pop that shit is actually pretty simple. We need to know the height that's at the top of the stack. We need to know the position that's at the top of the position stack. And because we have access to the enclosing scope, we can also know what the current position is. And if you remember back to our walkthrough of the algorithm, those three things are what you need to determine the area of whatever rectangle we're currently closing. And take note, I'm not creating the variables that pop that shit is interacting with inside of the scope pop that shit. I'm creating these variables in the enclosing scope. And that's because I want to have one scope where all of my variables exist, because as you'll see in a second, I actually need some of the results of pop that shit inside the find largest rectangle function. So really just think of pop that shit as a four line helper that is completely subordinate to the find largest rectangle function. And once we grab the height and the position that's at the top of the stack, we're going to calculate the area of the rectangle that we just finished, that we just popped off the stack. And we're going to figure out if that area is bigger than the biggest area we've seen. That's all pop that shit is for. So after some number of shit poppings, we will have reached a position in the stack where the current height in the stack is less than the height that we care about, the height that we're currently at. And if that's at the beginning of the list, if we're all the way at the start of the stack, you're going to want to put that back onto the top of the stack so that you don't lose track of where the current rectangle that you're dealing with started. And remember, to be in the state that we're in at all, there had to have been bigger values in the left hand side of the rectangle that are just now coming to a close with our current value. Which means whatever value we have right now, the rectangle that it's composing actually started somewhere to the left. So we need to keep track of that temporary position, that sort of earlier position value and push back onto the stack with the height that we're currently at and where that height started. Another way to think about this process is sort of looking back in time. Let's say we're at a height two and we've got three things on the stack already and two is now the smallest number. That means that this two actually started three positions ago. And so we need to go back in time and figure out what the first value in the stack is that's bigger than two and steal its position because that's actually the start point of our height two rectangle. So once we've finished iterating over this list, we might have a bunch of stuff in the stack that hasn't closed yet, that hasn't had a lower value come next. And so basically we need to redo the pop that shit approach, but instead of stopping when we hit a smaller number, we're gonna stop when we hit the end of the stack, when the stack is empty. We don't yet know what the areas of those rectangles might be. So we actually have to do another loop here to purge the stacks, to grab each value out of them and calculate the area of the rectangles that they represent and from those, figure out what the maximum value would be. And with that, you can pretty much just marker drop and walk away because you are the supreme lord of code. All kneel before me in my insane algorithmic competence. But if you did that, you'd be fucking up because the first thing you should do when you finish coding an algorithm like this is look at your own code line by line and look at what you fucked up because you did fuck something up. So here, for instance, if we take a step back, you'll notice for one, I didn't close the array access 
For shame, Gabbard, for shame. And so then you can mark a drop, you can flex. Oh, I'm the king of all the codes. Ah! Um, but if you did that, you would still be fucking up. Because in fact, there's a glaring error in this code. And it's in the second half of the if else. The mistake here is the assumption that the stack has to be empty in order to push the value back on top of it. And you can see the error of this if you imagine a histogram of the sort of one, three, two. In that case, when you get to the two, you will have a one and a three on the stack already. Now, if you pop the three off, because you should, because that's what the algorithm will do, then there will still be a one in the stack. So the length of the stack, the height of the stack is going to be one, but you still need to push that two back in there. So this is actually incorrect logic, and we're just gonna kind of magically wipe that out. And with that, you can declare everyone your royal subjects and tell them to kiss the ring. That's the uh, American ring, not the British ring. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is number five of the series, and it's going to be the last one for a few weeks because I'm getting ready to move. As always, if you like the episode, if you hate the episode, if you think my JavaScript sucks, I mean, let's be real, it sucks, then hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. And if there's a specific question you would like to see here, also comment with that. As always, thanks for watching. Blood.